Dear reader, I'm Tony and this is Book Text. I am going to be laying forth my TBR for the Reading Rush slash my own personal book a day readathon. But first, our word of the day is the Scottish verb to tartle. It, it refers to when you hesitate uh, in recognizing someone or something. So like you meet someone, but you can't remember their name is to tartle. So try not to tartle too much after the, after the quarantine is over. I, I just love it. And, and my Scottish heritage is very proud of fun words like tartling. So the Reading Rush is a week long readathon hosted by Ariel Bissett and Raylene LeMay, and I will put some um, links down in the description if you're interested in participating. But basically, you just try to read as much as you can um, between July 20th and July 27th. Um, they have seven challenges, and I'm going to attempt to fit my books into there. Um, challenge one is to read a book with a cover that matches the color of your birthstone. And my birthstone is the pearl, so white, I guess. Um, two is to read a book that starts with the word the, easy peasy. Three is to read a book that inspired a movie you've already seen. Four, read the first book you touch. Five, read a book completely outside of your house. Six, read a book in a genre that you've always wanted to read more of. And seven, read a book that takes place on a different continent than where you live. Um, also, as I'm trying to participate in the reading rush and do these challenges, I previously had set a goal for myself to spend two weeks in July reading a book a day, meaning I had 14 novellas in my book collection that I have not read that I wanted to read. So I thought this was the perfect timing to kind of combine those two things. So I'm actually extending my own reading rush to start on July 17th and end on July 31st. So I am going to go crazy, but it's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward, I have a hair right here. I have hairs everywhere, but you know, in my eyeball. Um, I'm trying to see how much I can read before the summer is over, essentially. So I have 14 books and I will give you some statistics on them and read the first line of each. And these were just randomly selected based, well not randomly selected, but they were only selected based on their length. So I went with 130, I believe, or 120 as my maximum. Um, and anything shorter than that, I felt like I could read in, uh, in about a day. Maybe not one sitting, but several sittings. So the first book on my TBR is The Man of Feeling by Henry Mackenzie. This was published in 1771. You're going to see a diversity of genres and publishing dates, by the way. 1771. It is 98 pages. And this is basically an, an 18th century novel about a man who is sensitive and pure hearted in a world that is unkind. Sounds really interesting. Good classic. The first line of The Man of Feeling is, My dog had made a point on a piece of fallow ground and led the curate and me two or three hundred yards over that and some stubble adjoining in a breathless state of expectation on a burning first of September. It actually seems pretty easy to read, so I'm looking forward to that. Book number two is, Candide by Voltaire. This was translated by Henry Morley, published in 1759, um, and is 120 pages, so getting closer to kind of like my maximum. This is another 18th century novel, though this one is French, and um, it is a dark satire skewering uh, optimism. So it's funny, but it's kind of dark. And it's making fun of optimistic people. Um, it sounds like there's lots of adventures, Candide. Um, well, anyway, there's, there's a lot of adventures in here. And it kind of reminds me of the French novels that Arabella is obsessed with in Charlotte Lennox's The Female Quixote, which I just finished reading. 
And I'm kind of looking forward to reading kind of a, a, another parody of those kinds of literature. It also seems like an interesting foil to A Man of Feeling. So I will kind of look forward to comparing these two books. The first line of Candide by Voltaire is... There's a lot to get through before you get to the first line. In the country of Westphalia, in the castle of the most noble baron of Thunderton Tronk, lived a youth whom nature had endowed with the most sweet disposition. Kind of a fun epic setup to an epic satire. Then I have The Bookshop by Pen Penelope Fitzgerald. This was published in 1978 and is 117 pages. There is a movie on Amazon Prime, so I'm going to count this for uh, challenge number three. And I promise to watch the movie before I start the book so that I have already seen it. Um, this is the story of Florence Green, who sets up a bookshop in a small English town and finds that the people around her are a little bit hostile towards her. Simple as it is. The first line of this book is... In 1959, Florence Green occasionally passed a night when she was not absolutely sure whether she had slept or not. Sounds like she's a little bit stressed out. I understand, Florence. I understand. Then I'm going to read The Shawl by Cynthia Ozick. This one was published in 1980, and it is 70 pages, so the shortest one, I think, from what I've collected. This is actually a novella and a short story together because they both um, cover the same main character, Rosa Lublin, who is a Jewish woman who witnesses the murder of her daughter at a concentration camp and, um, and then also explores what happens to Rosa years and years after this tragedy. So it sounds devastating, it sounds hard, but it also there's a little bit of magic in it um, with this shawl, the, the, the uh, object in the, in the title. Don't know much more beyond that, but looking forward to it. The first line of the shawl is, Stella, cold, cold, the coldness of hell. Sounds quite literary. Then I have the Country of the Pointed Furs by Sarah Orne Jewett. This was published in 1896. It is 88 pages, but that is deceptive because the Dover Thrift Editions have really tiny font and really big pages and little small margins. So it actually is probably a lot longer than that, but it, it fits the requirements for my uh, readathon. And this is the story of some New Englanders at the turn of the century trying to grapple with the change of, of time. Um, so I'm looking forward to the intimate character portraits that this book promises. The first line is, there was something about the coast town of Dunnet, which made it seem more attractive than other maritime villages of Eastern Maine. So maybe some, some nice landscape descriptions of New England, which would cheer me up great, greatly. Okay, then, I have Henry James's The Aspern Papers. This was published in 1888. It is 80 pages, but again, deceptive because Dover Thrift Edition. Um, this is the story of a man who becomes obsessed with obtaining um, the personal papers of a deceased poet. And it sounds like it's about obsession and passion and poetry and I totally feel like this is something that I would do, is become obsessed with the personal papers of a deceased writer that I liked. So it sounds kind of interesting, a little bit, uh, a little too close to home, maybe. Um, and the first sentence is, I had taken Mrs. Prest into my confidence. Without her in truth, I should have made but little advance, for the fruitful idea in the whole business dropped from her friendly lips. Ooh, so it's very beginning. We're, we're getting into the obsession. Great. Okay, 
Then I have Ethan Frome by Edith Wharton. This was published in 1911. It is 77 pages. Again, deceptive. Another Dover Thrift. Notice that most of them came from that because I just looked for the for the shortest books. The neighbor who is doing some sawing, apparently. Um, this is the story of a man who is bitter about his living situation and discovers a forbidden love. Um, the ending is supposedly shocking and surprisingly ironic, no, savagely ironic, which is just the kind of ending that I enjoy. The first sentence is, I have the story bit by bit from various people, and as generally happens in such cases, each time it was a different story. Ooh. Next up is Sofia Petrovna by Lydia Chukovskaya. This was published in 1967. It is 110 pages. It is set in Russia during the Cold War, so behind the Iron Curtain, which I know diddly squat about, because true story, in elementary school, my textbook still said USSR on the map. So I don't know very much about the USSR in this case, um, or much of Russian history. So this um, will apply for challenge number seven, which is a book on a different continent. And in short, Sofia Petrovna is a woman who goes mad after losing so much during World War II and the Cold War. That's all I know, but it looks really interesting. The first line of this book is, after the death of her husband, Sofia Petrovna took a course in typing. Cute. Don't think it's gonna be a cute book, but that part's cute. All right, next up is Charles Dickens's The Haunted House. So this is, he was actually the editor. It is a collection of short stories with a through line um, and so he wrote a couple of the, sh the stories, but other authors also contributed. It was published in 1862, it is 126 pages, and several members of the London Literati contributed stories about haunted houses. And I believe that they are kind of connected as if they were all rooms of the same house. I'm not quite sure the total connection, but it looks good. The first line of the first story is under none of the accredited ghostly circumstances and environed by none of the conventional ghostly surroundings that I first make acquaintance with the house which is the subject of this Christmas piece. It was apparently a Christmas piece. Next up is 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Humph. This was published in 1970. It is 97 pages. And it is told through letters between a writer in America and a used bookshop in London. Sounds cute. I, I would, I'm really looking forward to this one. Been wanting to read it for a long time. Oh, the first sentence. The first sentence is, Gentlemen, your ad in the Saturday Review of Literature says that you specialize in out-of-print books. Sure hope they do, for their sake. I also have Green Witch by Alice Hoffman. This is a far more recent book. It was published in 2010. It's 130 pages, so this is the maximum. And this story is about a girl called Green who goes on a kind of self-discovery journey as she is also collecting first-hand accounts from women who have been marked as witches. Um, and so I don't know much about it, but the first line is, this is what I remembered. What you dream, you can grow. Someone told me that, but I didn't believe it. Kind of interesting. It'll be a first Alice Hoffman book for me. We're getting close to the end. I have Portuguese Irregular Verbs by Alexander McCall Smith. This one, was published in 2003, so also more recent than some of these other books, it is 119 pages. It is from his series about Professor Dr. von Eaglefeld, and it appears to just be kind of a, a riotous adventure and danger story um, featuring the titular character, Professor Dr. von Eaglefeld. The first sentence is, 
Professor Dr. Moritz Maria von Eagelfeld often reflected on how fortunate he was to be exactly who he was and nobody else. We're all fortunate in that way, aren't we? Okay, then I have Maria Edgeworth's Castle Rackrent. This is an interesting shiny book. Hello? Oh, there you are. Hi, kitty. You're so loud. Yeah. Come here. Sweet kitty. Castle Rackrent was published in 1800 and is 97 pages. So it's another early, early novel. It is a, a classic that follows generations of the family at the Rackrent Castle. And uh, it's told through the, the point of view of the family steward. It sounds like it's kind of funny. It sounds like it's about community. It was called the first regional novel in English. So I, I, that's why I think it's about kind of the region of Rackrent in Ireland. Um, so that's all, that's all I know. But the first sentence is, no, there's a preface. I gotta pass the preface. Having out of friendship for the family upon whose estate, praise be heaven, I and mine have lived rent free time out of mind, voluntarily undertaken to publish the memoirs of the Rackrent family, I think it is my duty to say a few words in the first place concerning myself. So there you have the, the steward kind of setting up his history. Actually sounds pretty readable, so I'm looking forward to that. And last, E.M. Forster's Where Angels Fear to Tread. This was published in 1905. It is 170, um, excuse me, 117 pages. Um, again, a Dover Thrift edition though, so probably a little deceptive. And this is about a man who travels to Italy to save his brother's widow from an unfortunate relationship. An ill-matched romance is how the book describes it. So as usual, Forster is kind of looking at the relationships of the middle class and the contrast between cultures. So another, another good classic for me to read. The first line is, interestingly, they were all at Charing Cross to see Lilia off. Philip, Harriet, er, Harriet, Irma, Mrs. Harriton herself. So an interesting connection to 84 Charing Cross Road, which I am also reading. In total, I will be reading, if I finish them all, 1,446 pages, two 18th century novellas, four 19th century novellas, six 20th century novellas, and two 21st century novellas. Whew. If I can do this, I'll be so proud of myself. But if I can even read three or four, that's still more than I read before. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the reading rush and the book a day reading thon that I've read a thon that I've set for myself. Oh joy. Remember, there's always another book.